get saved. That's God's plan, and that's God's heartbeat to mankind. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Now, let's go to work. That word, he had appointed a day, is the Greek word, imera. It means a period. So let's do some exegesis on the word, a day. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 5. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Take note of the word children of the day. Verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Underline the word the day. Romans chapter 13 verse 12. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. On the line, the day is at hand. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your until heart. Until the day, on the line, the day dawn and on the line, the day star. John chapter 9 verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. While it is day, the night cometh. So, notice the word, the day, is in comparison against the night. Every time he talked about the day, he talked about the night. The day is light as against darkness. So, what happens again in Acts 17.31? Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. By that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men, in that he had raised him from the dead. He has appointed a day in which he will judge the world. So what will happen that day? Judgment. All right? Now, don't forget judgment. Judgment is to distinguish. All right? Judgment. And the judgment will be in righteousness. Righteousness by that man. The judgment will be in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. So the judgment will be in him being raised from the dead. Look at the scripture again. Whom he hath ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. That word judgment is the word crino. He will judge. Crino. He will distinguish. So we are back again to John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only because begotten Son. Because he hath not believed in the name of the begotten Son. Not because God has decided his condemnation. But because God gave him an offer of righteousness. But he rejected God's offer. So he's condemned already. Now pay attention. The day of judgment is that resurrection. That resurrection of Jesus is the day of judgment that is why god does not react god proacts the judgment of god will not be a reaction the judgment of god will be a proaction that is why the judgment is in the resurrection and what he did he gave us an assurance of that day when he raised jesus from the dead so already within the resurrection of Jesus is a judgment for both righteousness and unrighteousness. Within that resurrection of Christ. Pay attention. He says, by that man whom we have ordained, whom he raised from the dead. So the resurrection, the judgment will be in two folds. The judgment is in two folds. Number one, 
there is judgment in Christ's resurrection from the dead. And that resurrection is our salvation. That's number one. Then number two, there is the resurrection. The day. The day. But he has given us assurance of that day. We already have assurance of that day now. Give me that Acts 17, 31 and stay there. He says, because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. By that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men. What is our assurance? He raised Jesus from the dead. So the resurrection of Jesus is a guarantee for eternal salvation. You know, it's like people who say they don't believe in eternal salvation. Watch this briefly. I've been thinking about this. You come to somebody and say, receive Jesus into your heart. God loves you. And when you receive Jesus, his life will come on your inside. And you are free from condemnation. Then he looks at you and says, you are you eternally sure? And you say, no, I'm not sure. You are not sure and you want me to receive what you are not sure of? That is how they are who don't believe in eternal salvation. How do you market a product you are not sure of? Why do you want me to subscribe to what you yourself are not sure until that day? Let's wait when the day comes. We will know whether it's a product that we should receive or not. God is not that stupid. He has given us assurance. Did you see that? There is assurance of salvation. What is the assurance of salvation? Eternity. What makes salvation assured is that you are saved forever. That is the assurance. If you are not saved forever, then there is no assurance. If we are waiting until that day, then we shall know. Then there is no assurance. And friend, if I'm not assured of something, believe me, I will not market it to another person. Are you understanding it's like somebody comes to me and says, Dr. Damina, there is an investment opportunity. If you invest a million naira in another 20 days, you will have a million 200,000. 200,000 in 20 days? Have you invested? No. Thank you, sir. Have you invested? Yes. Have you received the profit? Yes. How many times? 10 times. That sounds like what I want to do. But if you just said one time, I'll say, okay, after some time, remind me. I want to be sure that you that have made yourself the product of experiment, that the experiment is confirmed on you. I don't want to join you and be a guinea pig. But I have news for you, friends. Our own salvation, not their own, is eternal. So we can boldly proclaim it to the world and get people to come to this salvation because in this salvation, you have no part to play. The Sota is the one who guarantees his work. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And that is why when you receive the salvation of Jesus, it is called entering into his rest. You enter his rest that's why if you look at the way brother paul wrote this because he had appointed a day in the which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained whereof he had given assurance there is assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead listen carefully now he gave assurance is the word pistis, the word faith. Faith in the resurrection from the dead. In that he raised up Jesus from the dead. So the judgment is in the resurrection. 
It is in the resurrection. It's not after the resurrection. The judgment is not in people dying. The judgment is in his resurrection. And it is in that resurrection he exposes the dead in unbelief. Listen carefully. The man who is not born again already carries it in his own belief. He already carries the judgment in his own belief. The man that is not born again already carries the judgment in his own belief. He dies with it then in that day that judgment will be exposed it is not that day that it will be judged in his unbelief is the judgment but when he dies on the day of resurrection his unbelief and the judgment of it will be exposed it's not like we're going to march to a throne where God is sitting down to be judging people. No. The day you received Christ was the day you escaped the judgment. The day you rejected Christ is the day you received the judgment. Is condemned. So, the judgment is in the unbelief. When a man dies with it, on the day of resurrection, the light of God will expose the death in the unbelief. That's why the judgment of God is exposing death, exposing sin. Alright? Now, so the full import of a man's unbelief will be seen on the day of resurrection. The full import. Just like the full import of our salvation will be seen on the day of resurrection. Do you know that at the end of the day, all we have believed for are eternal things. All. Once this mortality drops, the only thing we are left with are eternal things. The only thing. If we remove the resurrection of the dead, what we call rapture from Christianity, we are finished. If we remove the resurrection, that's why it's called the blessed hope. If you remove the resurrection of the dead from Christianity, we are done for. That's why it's called the blessed hope. Because it is in that resurrection that the full import of our faith in Christ will be made manifest. Are you following here? Yeah. It's in that resurrection. Now listen carefully. It's as if our hope is only in this world where of all men, most miserable. So, with all your breakthroughs, you know breakthroughs? With all your breakthroughs, breakthrough, 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 new season, next level, open heaven, supernatural progress overtake your overtakers is all about cars and houses and money and material things once this body drops they are all useless none of them are of eternal value none so at the end of the day that's why the gospel is not about a breakthrough it's not about a breakthrough. Because these things are of no eternal value. Oh, don't get me wrong. It's good if you have a car, enjoy it. I have one myself. And when I drive my car, I drive it out apology. Because that's why I bought it, to drive and use it. But it, it is in no way to be compared with the least spiritual thing that is happening in my life. In no way whatsoever. The main thing of Christ's death is in eternity. The main advantage and benefit of the death of Christ is in eternity. 
So the main gist of Christianity is eternal. Eternal life is actually living forever. Unbelievers will not die and live forever. Unbelievers will die forever. Don't forget, resurrection is not life. Unbelievers will be raised to death. Believers will be raised to life. That's why I say I am the resurrection and the life. Because resurrection is not life. So that a man is raised, doesn't mean he's raised to life. He can be raised to death. Stay with me. In resurrection is the judgment. So we can say the day of resurrection is the day of judgment. That judgment will be on the day of resurrection. Now, what will happen on that day? Light will be separated from darkness. Damnation will be separated from eternal life. Look at Romans 8.23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. To wit the redemption of our body. Now, remember, light will be separated from darkness at the same time. Damnation from eternal life at the same time. There will be no time difference. Resurrection to life at the same time resurrection to death that is the judgment did you hear what i said when the trumpet sounds we will all rise those of us that have died because of mortality we will rise in that resurrection some will rise to life some will rise to death that is the judgment and it will happen at the same time nothing like world ruler nothing like world government nothing like computer chip in the hands of people look at that Romans 8.23 where we read which have the first fruits of the spirit what is first fruit first fruit of the spirit is what we have in Christ. First fruits. Is not an offering. Given in January. First fruit. Is what we have in Christ. Just stay with me. You will soon see it. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Read for me. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But he have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That fear is fear of death. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and what? So no more bondage to fear. Fear of death. Who all their lifetime were subject to bondage because of the fear of death. But now you have passed from death to life so no more fear of death no more fear of damnation why we have the assurance of resurrection somebody shout hallelujah we have the assurance of resurrection so that receiving of the spirit is the first fruit the day you receive the spirit that is the first fruit so we have the first fruit of the spirit or the work of the spirit that means the work of the spirit starts at the point you got born again look at it in romans chapter 8 verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god sons of god 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but ye have received the spirit of adoption take note of the spirit cry. of adoption where we cry abba father 16 the spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. We have the same spirit. It bears witness. Same spirit. So, sons of God, spirit of adoption, same spirit. Then he says, the first fruits. The first fruit is called the earliest or the early in a harvest. The early harvest is called the first fruit. Is that true? And the first fruit is usually not a grain. It's a bunch. 
The first fruit is a bunch. Now, pay attention. What came early to us from the resurrection of Jesus as first fruit is a spirit. The spirit of adoption is the first fruit of the resurrection. Whereby we cry, Abba Father, we are born of God. We have the spirit of adoption. That is the first fruit. When harvest begins, the first thing you get, you know, that is what shows that it's a great season. So first fruit is a proof of the rest that will come. First fruit is a proof of the rest that will come. Please pay attention. Pay attention. So we have the first fruit of the spirit or the indwelling of the spirit. That's why it is called first fruit. Because kabato megea, lebato bekere tekaya, I want you to be alive in the spirit. We have the first fruit of the spirit in mortality. The first fruit of the spirit is in our mortality. What I have just said. That it is an oxymoron. You have life inside death. You have immortality in mortality. Mortality is perishable. Immortality is undiable. So you have Kabada. You have the spirit of life in eating vessel in a perishable container you carry immortality in mortality that is why it is the first fruit the first fruit is a sign of the whole harvest Zagalaba. so that's why he calls it first fruit then he now says when we now experience the foretaste blessed assurance jesus is mine oh what a what what a what first fruit so we we have the foretaste in our mortality so because we have tasted the first fruit and it is a wonderful experience we now groan we want to throw away this body so we can take the entire harvest i don't know if you're understanding what i'm saying so in our mortality we have the life of god however this body does not allow us the full expression so in our desire to drink all of it we grown to remove this mortality yeah. now stay with me so there's a conflict you know there's a conflict that's what paul called the sufferings of this life are not worthy to compare the suffering is a conflict the conflict in your body the conflict in your mortality you know that what you have is glorious but there is a container restricting you from enjoying the full glory. Yeah. It's called sufferings. You have the spirit in a body that is subject to corruption. So you have the incorruptible in corruption. The incorruptible is in a corruptible container. Now, the spirit is eternal. And it's the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Eternal. And it's the spirit that will raise your own body. Did you hear that? The spirit raised who from the dead? He raised Jesus. That was the proof that if that same spirit is inside you, the same thing it did with Jesus, it will do with you. That's the guarantee of your resurrection. That's why it's called the seal of redemption. That's why if you have the Holy Ghost, you don't pray for rapture. The Holy Ghost is the rapture. The rapture will be the Holy Ghost. 
The same Holy Ghost that raised Jesus from the dead. Death couldn't keep Jesus down. Death couldn't tie him down. On the third day, resurrection took place. That same spirit is inside you. On that day, Kabayana. Somebody say with me, I am assured. In Christ Jesus. Eternally guaranteed. In my salvation. Can I hear a good amen? So the Christian walk now cannot be all. This is not all that there is. No. This is not all that there is. This cannot be all the benefits. No. This more. This the better. Greater glory. Hallelujah. This one we have now is called the first fruits. You know that actually there are two adoptions in Romans chapter 8. Two adoptions. There is a spirit of adoption and then in verse 23 there is the adoption of our bodies. Two adoptions. How many adoptions? Number one, the spirit of adoption. Number two, the adoption of our body. So in our spirit, we are sons of God. But in our bodies, we are not. So then comes the adoption where our bodies will be placed like the sun. Look at the word first. First Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. And become the first fruits of them that sleep. Talking about the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is called the early rain. Our own resurrection is called the latter rain. It's not a move of the spirit. The early rain is the resurrection of Jesus. The latter rain is our collective resurrection. So, there is the indwelling of the spirit and there is the resurrection from the dead. Now, Romans chapter 8 verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Romans eleven sixteen. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the roots be holy, so are the branches. Romans 16, verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus. Who is the first fruit of Achaia? So, do you see that first fruit is human beings? It's not money. Did you observe? First fruit is human beings. It's not money. He said, "Salute my well beloved Epinetus, who is the first fruit." So, Jesus is our first fruit by resurrection, and those who got born again early in a church are called first fruit. Now, if you observe, the previous verses we have read is all human beings he's talking about. Now, let's read more so that it's clearer. First Corinthians 16, 15. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanas, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted, which who have addicted? First fruit. The first fruit have addicted themselves. It's not money. Okay. James 1 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature who should be a kind of first fruit us revelation 14 4 these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God unto the lamb redeemed from among men being the first fruit Men being the first fruit. I'm sure with this my few words. With these few points of mine. I have successfully convinced you. The first fruit is human beings. First Corinthians 15 20 now. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He has become the first fruit of them that slept. He was teaching on the resurrection of the dead. Now, 
So in verse 20, he says, Jesus is the first fruit of them that slept. Meaning, his resurrection is the first fruit of our resurrection. Alright? Now, give me verse 21 and 22 of the same chapter. For since by man came death, and by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Yes, 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Then 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. First fruit refers to Jesus and the saints before he came. And you will see it now. Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Right. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Next verse. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So that event is the first fruit. When he rose, he rose with the Old Testament saints who believed. Him and them are the first fruit. The first fruit is not one, it's a bunch. Him and the Old Testament believers rose. That's the first fruit. That first fruit is the first fruit of our own resurrection so that has been fixed that their bodies will be raised of those who are born again those that were born again before Jesus came all who had faith in typology their spirits were in Hades their bodies were on earth so when it happened, they came together with Jesus and their bodies were raised together. That's actually what happened in the first resurrection. So what's now going to happen is called the second coming. Because the first fruit was the first one, resurrection. The second resurrection is called the second coming. The second coming is actually resurrection. First resurrection, first coming. Second resurrection, second coming. And the second resurrection is the last resurrection. Now, pay attention. The same way the first one happened is the same way the second one is going to happen. That's why it's called in that same scripture where we read, you know, Romans chapter 8, read verse 23 for me again. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. We groan within ourselves. Why? Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So the second adoption is the redemption of our body. What is the redemption of our body? Mortality for immortality. Mortality for immortality. Hallelujah. So resurrection is in the Bible. And we coined it rapture. There's no rapture in the Bible. What we call rapture, Bible language for it is resurrection. So again, what is the judgment at his coming? What is the judgment at his coming? In his judgment is his resurrection. Read for me 1 Corinthians 15:51. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The dead shall be raised incorruptible is dead bodies. Earthly bodies. Mortality. He didn't say, we shall disappear. He didn't say we shall but he said we shall be so it's not a disappearance it's not a disappearance it's a change okay we shall be changed give me verse 53 and 54 for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So it is a putting on. It is. Whoa.
We will collect, don't bother. We will collect the immortal body and we will wear it. In the wearing of it, mortality disappears. Do you understand? It is not disappearance. On that day, just before you go and hold your leg, you are watching movie too much. It is not a going, it is a wearing. It is not a travel, it is a wearing. Heavenly race. It is not a race, it is a wearing. You grab it, the grabbing of it will be done by the spirit that is in you. The spirit will just clothe you. The Holy Ghost will wear you the cloth. Once the cloth covers you, mortality is gone. You are in the realm of the immortal. Am I talking to somebody? It's, it's not going to be in the twink, twinkling of an eye. In the twinkling of an eye. Read for me the next verse. Yeah. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the thing that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Did you see that? What? When this corruptible shall have put on, put on, put, put on in corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in what? So when believers die, they have not failed. When believers die, they have not messed up. They only slept awaiting the victory that is already theirs. They won already. They have won in Christ. Hallelujah. Give me 55 to 58. I feel like dancing. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Mm. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Yes. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be which giveth us who? Through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, then look at the next verse. There's something instructive there. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Actually, what is? For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain things. Your labor is not in buying cars. Your labor is in saving souls, which is eternal investment. The believer should not be seen laboring to acquire material things. The greatest labor of the believer should be investing in eternal things. We are men of eternal value. Your labor is not in vain things. And you will soon find out why you shouldn't spend all your energy in vain things. You will find out. Just stay with me. Paul said, to be present with the Lord is to be absent from the body. So, the need for your body is earth. Outside of this earth, you don't need this body. This body is only useful on earth. Once earth gives way, this body is useless. You don't need it in eternity. Now, First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, hey. concerning them which are asleep. Yes. That ye sorrow not. Sorrow not. If a brother in Christ sleeps, sorrow not. He's not lost. Read on. Even as others which have no hope. Yes. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Next verse. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Yes. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Comfort yourselves with these words. Chapter 5 verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Next verse. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as the thief in the night. Yes. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The night shall be exposed. Next. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are not in darkness, so you will know the day. The only people that will not know the day of the Lord are those in darkness. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you like a thief in the night. That means on that day you will wake up and prepare because you will know that you are about to wear something. That day shall not overtake you. You are not of the night. Gabado bedea. Ye are all the children of light. Somebody shout, I'm a child of the light. And? The children of the day. Of the day, yes. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Do you see? Night and darkness, light and day are walking together. So the day of light for us, the day of light for us, is the day of darkness for them. Same event. It's not like we shall go. Then the world ruler will take over. Then people, eh, eh. the moment mortality puts on immortality, the dead in Christ rise to life, the dead in sin will rise to damnation. Why? Because before people die, they have received judgment. If you believe in Jesus, you have escaped death. If you don't believe in Jesus, when you die, you die with the judgment, waiting for resurrection to death. That's why that prayer they used to pray for dead people is a display of ignorance. It's gross illiteracy. You don't pray for dead bodies. What for? It will become sand. Even if they scatter the body, if he's a believer, on the day of resurrection, wherever they carry the sand to, wherever, if they took his leg to Arabia, they took the other leg by import. They imported it or exported it as sand to Dubai. Then the rest of his body, in the process of digging and excavating, they exported him to China for Chinese products. When the trumpet sounds, that entire configuration, wherever it is around the world, will gather together. Shh! And it shall be changed. What are you talking about? Do you know what is about to hit this planet? Eh. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Yes. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Night, day. Next verse. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Those that sleep are those that are not born again. In that context. Okay, verse 9 now. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus we Christ. We have no appointment with judgment. Our appointment is with salvation. Next verse. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep we should live together with him we should live together with him whether we are alive or we are sleeping both we that are alive and those that are sleeping we are together with him we are together now night and day will happen at the same time but night will be exposed by the day so destruction and resurrection will happen at the same time so don't be imagining a gathering where judgment will happen. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 to 9. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Yes. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. 
who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from from so destruction will be the absence of God's presence and power did you see it who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence not in the presence from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power so they are banished away from his presence meaning he is not in their destruction so destruction is the absence of God in fact the destruction is because God is not there the death is because life is not there. Now, give me verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Repeat. When he shall come to be glorified Louder. in his saints. Louder. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. To be glorified where? In his saints. So the glorification will be inside where? Inside his saints, all right? And to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. It was believed in that day. So he shall come to be glorified in the saints. There will be no cue. The day you believed was the day you were saved. The day of resurrection, he will be glorified in you. No cue. You already accepted your destination when you made a choice for the gospel. And when you rejected the gospel, you settled your destination from the presence of God. So, because you said, God, I don't want you, God withdrew and left you. The withdrawal of God is called destruction. It's called flaming fire. The absence of God is fire. So, the resurrection of the church is the destruction of the unbelieving man. The resurrection of the church. So now, what is the judgment seat of Christ? I want you to remove your religious glasses now and throw away your religious caps. Remember that the judgment of God is not a reaction, it's a pro-action. As you are here now, you can judge yourself. Huh? You judge yourself. If you are not born again, you judge yourself and be born again. Once you are born again, you have judged yourself. You have accepted a destination in eternity with God. The judgment seat of Christ is not a room. It's not a chair. It's not a chair. The judgment seat of Christ is the same resurrection. The same resurrection is the judgment seat of Christ. To sin and death is called fire. Because the fire will be away from the presence of God. Romans chapter 14 verse 8 For whether we live we live unto the Lord and whether we die we die unto the Lord whether we live therefore or die we are the Lord Did you see that whether we live or we die we are the Lord that a brother die does not deride us him Next verse For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and living Uh-huh Next verse But why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, if your mind is not renewed, you'll be imagining a long queue. Huh. Okay? But Paul was using a language of communication to bring out a truth. Now, pay attention. Next verse. 
For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. If you notice, he is talking to the believer. Okay, verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So we shall all, talking to believers, all of us here, shall give account of ourselves to God. Hmm. Now, in 1 Corinthians 6, 2, he said we shall judge the world. Know ye not that you shall judge the world. Our judging the world is not we sitting on a throne and unbelievers are coming. Do you know how we shall judge the world? As we go to preach, Christ died. He was buried. On the third day, he rose for your justification. And you can receive life now. Once we preach that message, we brought judgment. If the man accepts the message, he has escaped judgment. If he rejects the message, with our message, we have judged him. So the preaching of the gospel is the message of life and at the same time, the message of judgment. How many of you remember the scripture says whoever sins you forgive is forgiven and whoever sins you retain is retained how do you retain people's sin by not preaching how do you forgive people's sins by preaching to them when you preach they receive they receive the forgiveness of sins so we are the ones judging the world by the gospel that we preach it's not a throne where we will sit down on a big chair there is no that one is nollywood drama glory to god so judge means to distinguish. So we shall distinguish the world and we shall distinguish angels in the resurrection. Look at the Bema seat of Christ. That judgment seat is called Bema seat. Bema. Bema seat. That Bema seat is where we get the word Komizo. Komizo is used ten times. Ten times for compensation. For compensation. Like you work for something and you get it. So that day is called the judgment seat of Christ. Because that is the day when we shall be compensated. For what we have done well. And what we have not done well. The compensation will be for what we have done well. And what we have not done well. Hebrews eleven nineteen. read for me. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. 39. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Now pay attention to Colossians 3.25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. He that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. Ephesians 6.8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Any good thing a man does, he shall receive from the Lord, whether he is bond or free. So, if you do wrong, you shall be rewarded. If you do good, you shall be rewarded. Did we read that? Good and bad will be rewarded. Now, so, if you have done evil, you get evil. So knowing that the Lord does not give evil, where will the evil come from? Huh? Huh? Where will the evil come from? Okay, keep that and pay attention. Because I will answer it with scripture. The word Bima seat is used in the Roman Empire. Bima is where Pilate sat down and told them to go and crucify Jesus. It's not a nice seat like that. He only used it to explain Bima seat. You will find it used in the following scriptures and you can read them for personal study. Matthew 27, 19. John 19, 13. Pilate used it. Is used for all rulers of Israel. Acts 751. 
Acts 12, 21. Acts 18, 12. Acts 18, 17. Acts 25, 6. Acts 25, 10. Now, you see it used in context. Romans 14, 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Before the bema seat, the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 to 11. Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. So we labor, so that we can be accepted of him. Next verse. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. So every man will receive whether he has done good or bad. Next verse. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That word terror is the reverence. The reverence. That is because we reverence God, we persuade men. It's not terror like in terrorist. Because we reverence God, we persuade men. Continue. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Yes. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that he may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. So, the reason why we preach is because we have the awe of God. We have reverence for God. We have, that's why we go for evangelism. We have reverence for God. So let's look at that resurrection again because I want us to look at that judgment seat of Christ. That judgment seat of Christ is what we call the rapture. Rapture. That's the judgment seat of Christ. And it is only used for those who are on earth at that point. He will appear in flaming fire. That fire is the absence of God that will destroy sin and death. That's the fire. The absence. God will appear and his appearance will expose fire that will destroy sin and death. So how does that become the judgment for the believer? Now, please pay attention anything that is vain and anything that is corruptible will be destroyed along with the unbeliever that's why it says our faith is not in vain things vain things so that's why brother Paul now says in 1st Corinthians 3 12 to 15 now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. What is the foundation? Eh? What is the foundation? When you got born again, on what were you born? On the foundation. Who is the foundation? Christ. So your salvation is assured because you are in Christ. However, in Christ you are building. The foundation is sure make sure that what you are using to build on the foundation is also sure because verse 12 if you use gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble all of these are materials for building next verse every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every the same fire that will destroy sin and death is the same fire that will try the works and if the works are vain works they will be burnt but that fire of sin and death cannot burn incorruptible work it's not going to be a lot it's going to be at the resurrection as we are raised from corruption into incorruption and the unbeliever is also raised the same judgment that will take them out 
is what will try the works. The works. That judgment. The works. Now give me the next verse. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Next verse. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. He himself will be saved. The fire will not burn him. Because he is not corruptible. Now, what is judgment? To expose, to distinguish every man's works, will be to be exposed on that day. What's the reward of evil? Nothing. Unbelievers will stop existing. Your PhDs, fire will clear them. PhD, MSc, BA. Three billion dollars in Chase Bank America. 14 buildings in Dubai. 20 cars in your they're all corruptible that money you should have brought for crusade that you kept in your pockets <laughs> it will be born that is the way it, you will look for it you will see that small kiosk that is keeping you from bible study all the biscuit and home of it. <laughs> that your small chemist that is always keeping you busy i cannot come to church because even in service time is when customers have Those are all vain things. Takobala. 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 First Corinthians 4, 3 to 5 as I close. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. Next verse. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Verse 5, carefully. Therefore judge nothing before judge the time. Judge nothing before the time. Until the Lord comes. Yes. Who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Did you see God's judgment? God's judgment is bringing to light. Is exposing. When God is judging, he exposes the hidden things. So, God's judgment will expose and God's judgment will distinguish. Who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness? Now, the next sentence, read it carefully with respect. And will make manifest the counsels of the heart. So, the judgment of God for reward will be a judgment of motives. If you like, build a church of 5 million members. If your motive is economy, <laughs> so let me gather crowd so I can be collecting money. <laughs> At the end, it's not the physical. It's what was the motive? What was your intent for preaching? Why did you join ministry? Eh? So since you couldn't get work in the bank, you call yourself pastor. <laughs> Why are you in the choir? So you can shout. Hey, hey, hey. Why are you in the offering department? So you can be sharing. You know there are people that still offering. When they carry up. Not in this church. Oh. I'm talking to the entire world. But there are people that still offering. You don't know what I'm talking about. When they carry offering basket on their way. They help themselves. I and the Lord are one spirit. So on that day, what will happen? All your years of offering ministry. There are people that come to church to look for wife. 
there are people when it's praise worship they dance so that they can get people's attention at the end of the day all the physical things you have gathered will not be seen it is your motive that is why god's reward is not for crowd money and fame what is the motivation for what you are doing that is what will appear for judgment it's not going to be um, physical achievements the physical god is not inventing things it's your heart the counsels of the heart that is what will be exposed because now we don't know what is in your heart we are seeing you very active only god knows why you are active maybe you are impressing a sister that you want to marry so you become very busy sweating all the time <laughs> why am i preaching me too if i'm preaching to impress you <laughs> Yeah. What's your motive? What's your motive? The counsels of the heart. <laughs> Stand up. Bodagaya. <laughs> Why are you playing keyboard? <laughs> to show us skill. Bang, bang, bang. You are looking to see if everybody is looking. Eh? <laughs> Why are you on television? So that they can see that you are very, very... <laughs> once, look, look, once the motive is not Christ, it will be burnt. Once the motive is not Christ, ay, ay, ay. all of us shall appear. And you know this burning is not going to be after we have settled down. It's on arrival. As soon as the trumpet sounds, boom! You know, some people think because ah, that man of God is always doing crusade. In heaven, he will have crowd. Before you will see him in heaven, all the crowd... If his motives are not correct. But the man after phew, will be saved. <laughs> after all his works are burnt, he will be saved. So that you will see him without a thank you. So, ah, that man of God with all the mega crusade, Jesus didn't say thank you to him. The team burned before Jesus could say thank you. <laughs> so be unmovable always abounding in the lord for as long as you know that your labor is not in vain things don't labor in vain things be men and women of eternal value let your heart be set on eternity let your heart be eternity driven let your heart be changing lives driven let your heart be saving souls driven Say, I hear you. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray for everybody in this building, on Facebook, television, YouTube, and all our campuses, that these words have come to straighten us out and keep us more focused and more dedicated to the only cause that is ours, and that is the advancement of your kingdom. Thank you for our vision to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping believers to know who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, and what Christ can do through them. And we are resolute, we are focused, we are dedicated, and we are passionate about this assignment. And Lord, we are dedicated to this cause that the entire blue marble planet will be flooded with the fragrance of Jesus jesus that the work of christ will not be wasted for those whom he died for so i decree in this building you are strengthened with might by the spirit you are laboring in and out of season you are kept by the power of god your labor shall not be in vain in the name of jesus and i decree and i declare that we are focused on this cause and we are committed to this assignment I pray for everybody hearing the sound of my voice 
you will not be weary in well doing in the name of Jesus great grace is upon you great grace is upon you great grace is upon you in Jesus precious name and every believer says a powerful amen welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness what a service what a word I believe you've been impacted affected 